Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. This afternoon I thought I would sit down, have a cup of tea and chat through just some updates that are happening around in the garden and also with the flower farm. I wanted to kind of do just like a little bit of a check-in and a wrap-up of where I'm at and what I've kind of achieved and done so far and then just a few plans for next year. I will be doing kind of like a not a new year's resolutions but like a 2023 goals video i suppose you could say um, and i'll pop that up in the new year sometime but today just wanted to have a little bit of a chat and i'll overlay some shots of what the garden is looking like what the flower farm area looks like um, and also just what the plans are for the next month or so because there's some things that i'm doing um, to prepare for leaving the um, flower farm and the garden for a few weeks that I thought I would chat through with you all. So it's definitely not ideal, but we are leaving for a few weeks and because it's summer, it's, you know, the peak of the growing season and we won't be here for a few weeks over Christmas and the new year. Uh, I'm having to do a few things to the flower farm just to prepare it for the first kind of real growing season that I'm going to be starting with and that is for autumn next year. So in about June this year, I decided that I really did want to go through and start some kind of flower farm or growing more flowers in the garden, I suppose, to then sell. Um, and then we got hit with all of that horrible rain. We have had thousands of mils of rain this year and it was incredibly difficult to do anything in that period as i know a lot of people also really suffered so throughout that time i was kind of just i don't know just a little bit upset that my plans couldn't go forward i suppose um i had planned to plant all of these seeds but i didn't have a lot of my garden beds ready and i was just getting used to the area seeing what could grow okay and also what the soil was like what i needed to do with the soil um, after getting all of my soil test results so yeah it was a lot of learning and a lot of like inside work and inside planning and contemplating how I wanted this to look and what I can actually grow in this area uh, because this is our first year actually living here and I needed to know where the water went in the property, uh, how the soil held the water, what kind of bugs and insects are around in the different seasons. So from about June to now I have definitely learned so much um, about this property and where things grow well and yeah just all of the conditions that I really needed to know before starting a flower farm. So instead of planting like straight in the ground I focused all on my bed prep so I have cardboarded a lot of areas. I brought in mushroom compost um, and other fertilizers and mulch to mulch the pathways uh, and created like a nice little patch down the back that I am so excited to uh, get growing all of the different flowers in autumn next year or when we get back from our trip I'm going to be sowing a lot more seeds but yeah at the moment I'll run through what it looks like what I have growing um, and yeah just how I'm feeling about it all so I'm really happy with the little cottage garden that I've started up the front so this is closer to the house and this has um, a lot more perennials in it that I have planted and then I've been growing veggies and other flowers that are annuals around them but the perennials are starting to get a lot bigger now which is so exciting so I have three rose bushes one of which isn't doing fantastic but the other two are growing so amazing um, and I'm so excited to start using the petals and also the roses in um, bouquets and arrangements I've already started using the petals uh, and I'm going to be drying a lot of those for a lot of future flower projects um, but yeah I am so glad that I have my own roses and a lot of beautiful foliage plants in this area that are now getting established and that I can start to uh, pick some of the leaves next year to also use as greenery in arrangements. This garden was really great uh, to plant like one or two things, one or two seeds of different flowers to see what I really enjoyed and what I like. 
Um, at the moment, the Snapdragons are on their way out as summer approaches, but I know this is going to be a really important crop for me because they grow really well in this area and they just look absolutely stunning in arrangements. So I think another thing this year that was really important was to get my key flowers that I know grow really well and that I'm comfortable growing. I had I had planned to, you know, plant so many different things as we all do as gardeners. Like it's just, it, we can't help ourselves. Um, but I've had to narrow it down quite a lot just to some flowers that I know grow well and that I can produce a lot of because you do need quite a lot of flowers for arrangements. So yeah, snapdragons are definitely going to be one of those. Um, not so much for arrangements, but I have been growing and harvesting a lot of calendula. And this is kind of um, petering out now in the garden, although there is a lot of plants that have self-sown now. So I'm going to have an abundance of calendula, which I can just dot around the garden, which is going to be fantastic um, because I do make my own calendula balm and I've been drying the petals um, for lots of future flower farm projects. And also the straw flowers in this garden, they are doing really well and I'm about to harvest quite a lot of those. Um, so I know they're a crop also uh, that I will be growing a lot of next year. In kind of like the middle of our property is where I have planted now two beds of zinnias and these are going to be really important for when I come back from my trip um, and in the new year to be harvesting lots of fresh flowers from those. They're a crop that I know I can grow really well and they look great and full and happy in bouquets. So um, yeah, I'm super excited for those and they're, and they're growing really well. They had a bit of a rough start as did like all of the seedlings with all the rain and the mud. Um, but now they're starting to look a little bit happier and I have been pinching them back so um, that they're not just growing one up. They're kind of branching out now uh, and they'll have a lot more flowers on them. So that is what like my third crop that I know I can grow a lot of and grow them really well here uh, because when we did move here in summer back at the start of the year I grew a lot of those and they did fantastic all up until um, like mid to late autumn they did fantastic so I will be succession sowing those um, coming into the new year as well to have for the flower farm. And then the back garden, this is where it really struggled because as you go down our property, uh, the water table rises and it really has only been in the last few weeks that it has gone back down again. I, I was just amazed at how much water we had this year with the multiple La Nina's that we had. Just, it was just incredible the amount of precipitation that was falling from the sky. It was, um, yeah, I'm really hoping we don't have that next year. Um, but down the back, uh, it's looking really nice now. I will put a before, like before being last week of what it looked like. Uh, it was pretty messy and still struggling with the bandicoot. Even though we finished the fence, it's still getting in our property and just digging everything up. It's so upsetting, but also I've tried so many different things. Uh, I'm just going to have to like block all of the little holes around the whole property, which, you know, we're on like half an acre. So it's a large property defense. But yeah, we're just going to have to figure that one out. So I had a lot of sticks and things around just to deter the bandicoots. But uh, I've since tidied it up a little bit. I have mulched the pathways. So uh, it's all going to be nice and neat on one of the sides and then the other side. Um, there are a few weeds around, but I am going to be tarping a lot of that just to kill off the weeds while we go. Um, but what is planted there at the moment in that garden in the top row, I do have a lot of snapdragons and again, they're coming to an end, but I have been harvesting those and they just look so beautiful in arrangements. I particularly loved a lot of the Costa uh, snapdragons, like the apple blossom and there was like a lavender one that was just so beautiful. So they were doing well. Um, and I've also got a few beetroot still in that row that they are a really great size now and I need to harvest them out of the ground. Um, I am still going to be growing like some veggies in the flower farm area uh, because I have the space and um, yeah, I just, I will always grow vegetables. So 
Uh, I've still got some beetroot down there um, that I'm excited to harvest. I always love having beetroot around Christmas. It's very Christmassy to me because we make a lot of recipes with beetroot. In the next row down, um, on one side is where we had the onions and the other side has nothing at the moment, but I do have two trays of cosmos. Again, that is another plant, another flower that I will be growing a lot of. So that was what, number four? Yeah, four. Um, and I know I can grow that really well here. So I have two full trays ready to be planted in that area. So that when we get back, I will hopefully have some flowers starting and alongside the zinnias, I can do up a few bunches with those. And then the row over, the bandicoot just loves this row, just loves it. <laughs> um, but I do have some sea holly planted here. I did have a few billy buttons, they kind of got dug up. And also a lot of status. Status is again something I will be growing a lot of, so that is what, number five? Yeah. Um, that I love growing. I have harvested so much of this and I've been drying it in the garage so I'll always have some kind of filler flower. Yeah. You can use status when it's dry or fresh. It's always got that kind of um, papery crepe flower texture that just it's just so beautiful and I, I've loved uh, adding this to arrangements this year. So that's definitely another one I will be planting and I might try and plant some um, when I get back and see how it goes coming into the cooler months because we don't tend to get a lot of frost here. It's quite mild so I can grow all year round and grow flowers all year which is exciting. And then the last row in that area I had a lot of green manure so that was just a mixture of different brassicas and fenugreek I think and other kind of nitrogen fixing plants that are breaking up the soil and I have since cut it all back. I probably let it go a little bit too long to be honest to cut it all back but that's okay it's still organic matter and I've since cut it down and then this afternoon I'll probably hopefully overlay some footage of this um, but Scott and I are going to be moving one of the tarps over onto um, the, the green manure bed. I'm yet to buy some proper like silage tarps uh, but it's working for me for now so I will be putting that over the garden bed and leaving that for a few months to let all of that green manure break down and I think we're going to have some really great soil in that garden bed. And the other day um, I have the other side of that bed have some yarrow planted which is struggling a little bit. Um, that's another one actually though that I have in the cottage garden that's doing amazing. So that is another one I'm absolutely going to be growing a lot of. A great filler flower as well. Um, but yeah in the rest of that bed I have planted more green manure. So I had a, a little bit of leftover of a spring and summer green manure mix, which I think had sunflowers, I think buckwheat, mung beans, and then I also had a bunch of bush bean seeds that I am definitely not going to plant all of these to eat them. So I've saved some of the seeds, but I've planted a lot of them as green manure in the garden. So they're also going to grow and fix nitrogen. And if I get a few little beans, that'll be great. But its main um, kind of use is to fix nitrogen and build organic matter in that area. And then we've got some bare patches that have been covered for a few months now. And in these areas, I'm just going to be planting watermelon and pumpkins. I have quite a lot of seeds that I've sown um, and maybe zucchini as well. And just have that area all for pumpkins and things that are just going to sprawl out and hopefully give us lots of food. Uh, and that's just um, because I don't have time to prepare those beds for flowers. I'm just going to... Yeah, plant them out with pumpkins, probably mulch them and just let them do their thing until next year. So that's a little bit of an update on what's growing and where I'm at with it all. I get so inspired by people on YouTube, but I also like I do tend to be a little bit uh, down or a little bit hard on myself when I don't reach um, the goal or what my garden or what I think I want my garden to look like compared to others 
and it's something this year that I have really got so much better about is not worrying about that and just staying in my own lane and just being thankful and grateful for what I do have uh, and also just really proud of myself for creating this really great garden space. It is so hard to create garden beds from scratch on grass uh, when you don't have a lot of power tools and it's just me doing all of this. So I, I have my broad fork and my little garden cart and my shovels and my garden forks just to create all of these garden beds. So I'm really proud of myself for getting to that and so excited to be planting so many more flowers next year. So I've got a lot of work to do, but I'm so glad that I've used this year to set it all up and get a lot of perennials in the ground that I'm going to be using for foliage as well. I've planted a lot of foliage plants, a lot of natives, um, and we do already have a lot of natives on the property that are looking great in bouquets and arrangements. And also just continuing working on the soil health and building organic matter, which I am definitely going to be doing a lot more uh, with green manure next year. I've just really enjoyed how it works and just how easy it is to build organic matter and build the soil using green manure rather than bringing in a lot more compost. So I'm excited to share my journey about that. But I'm also very glad to have a bit of a break from the garden over the next few weeks. Also just being able to do this next year full time is going to be so much more easier to manage things and actually do a flower farm because I think it would be incredibly challenging to do something like this if you did have a full time job that wasn't based at home. Working for a lot of the year in research and finishing off my PhD was kind of a full-time job. Um, and now that's all wrapped up and I have the letter where I'm graduating next year. Uh, I can just breathe a little bit of relief from all that and focus my energy on growing this YouTube channel and also the flower farm. So thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for supporting me on this journey. Um, I'm learning. I'm learning every single day. It's not a how-to channel, how to start a flower farm or anything like that. I'm really just sharing my journey and the ups and downs of trying to do this um, while trying to, you know, manage everything else in life as well and work towards a more happy and slower life. I, I've been craving that for so many years now. And yeah, I just really want to slow down. So and I've definitely, you know, had a bit of a more slow year in the garden with all of the weather, but, um, but I'm excited next year to have a little bit more time to do it and yeah, work it into my daily routine. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will definitely be doing a full garden tour of the other cottage garden area uh, in uh, a few videos or the next video, I don't know. I've got so many videos to edit, so we'll see when it comes out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next one, happy gardening everyone. Bye.